Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to format partitions as well as mount and unmount them. So to get started, let's go ahead and define exactly what a file system is. So a file system is a logical container that is used to store files and directories. Each file system is created in its very own partition and during installation, for the most part, uh, I guess it varies depending on what uh, flavor or distribution of Linux you're using, um, there will usually be either one or two file systems that are created by default. So you'll definitely have the root file system, um, but I believe on CentOS you may have the slash boot as well. So that would be the second file system. And to check all the file systems that you have on your machine, you just have to run the df minus h command. Now I went ahead and just listed some of the common file systems. Uh, don't worry too much about uh, the difference between them. Um, once you start making file systems based off your specific needs, you can then figure out which file system is most optimal for what you want to use it for. Now a file system, when it gets created, it gets assigned a UUID or a universally unique identifier. Um, Assigning a UUID makes the file system unique amongst all other file systems on the machine. So it's a way of identifying that specific file systems. And one of the benefits of UUIDs is that they, um, they stay the same across reboots. So it's not like if we reboot, your each partition gets a different um, UUID. It'll always have that same UUID. And if you want to verify what the UUID of a file system is, just do the lsblk command and then pass in the dash o flag and then print out all the, uh, I guess, the options that you want to print out. So name, mount point, size, and then when you include that last one, UUID, it'll also print out the UUID. So to format a partition, you have to use the mkfs command. You pass in the t flag. Um, to tell it what type you want to format a partition for. So the type can be, you know, ext3, xfs, zfs, any of these supported file systems on your machine. And then you provide the partition. So this would be like slash dev slash sdb1 or slash dev slash sdc7. Now to mount a file system, you need to use the mount command. Um, and to unmount it, you have to use the, I, that looks like a typo, so it should be U-mount. It shouldn't be unmount, it should be U-mount, actually. And, and one thing to keep in mind is that when you mount a file system with the mount command, it won't persist after a reload. So if you mount a, a specific partition to a specific directory, if you reload it, you'll find that upon reload, it's no longer mounted. So to automatically mount a file system on boot, you actually have to modify the slash etsy slash fs tab file uh, to tell the machine that you want to automatically mount a specific file system upon boot. Now, to actually do that, um, there's a specific format that the fs tab file looks for. And the way to format it is you want to provide the UUID first, or this can just be the partition um, name. So it could just be slash dev slash sdb1, and you can do whichever one you prefer. Um, but it's definitely more recommended to do the UUID. You provide the mount point, which is the directory you want to mount it to. Then the file system type, um, so like ext3 or xfs. Then you pass in um, specific options, like do you want it to be read only or async? Um, or, uh, and there's plenty of other options. Um, then the last two values are dump and pass. I don't want to, I don't really want to go over them too much because it probably won't make sense to you guys at this point. For now, um, when you're putting an entry into the FS tab file, just leave it as zeros. Uh, and only if you find the need to actually use a different value, then go ahead and um, choose a different value. But for the most part, zero, zero is going to work um, in most cases. All right, so to list all the file systems on our machine, just run a df minus h. Um, so what you can see here is basically the main file system to look at is slash dev slash sta1. 
uh, and that's mounted on the root directory. And let's go ahead and create a new file system. So let's format one of the partitions we created in the last video for a specific file system, and then we'll go ahead and mount it at a specific directory. Um, so to format a file system, remember it's MKFS. Well, first let's let's take a look at all of our partitions. So let's say we want to partition SDB1. Sorry, not partition. Let's say we want to format SDB1 for a specific file system. So let's just do MKFS-T. And let's just format it to ext3 file system and then provide the path to that partition, so sdb1. And we need root privilege to do that. All right, so it has been created and you can see here it prints out the UUID. Um, also, if you want to see the UUID with the specific command, just do lsblk-o and then name, mount point, size, and UUID. Uh, and here you go, you can see SDB1 right here, and that's its UUID. Now let's say we want to mount this specific uh, partition um, at a specific location. So let's make a directory, we'll just call this, um, let's say my new, we'll just call this new mount point. But really, it can be any directory. Actually, just not to not to confuse confuse you guys, I'll just name this um, uh, analysis. Let's say this mount um, this mount point contains all of our analysis files. So then we have this, and we can see we have our uh, our analysis directory. And to mount it, there we do mount slash dev slash stb one because that's the partition we want to mount and we want to mount it at um, slash home, slash Sanjeev, slash analysis. And we need root privileges. And there you go, it's been mounted. So if we check df minus h, you can see, where is it? This last guy right here, dev slash sdb1 has been mounted um, at this directory. So then we can go into that directory, create files and do whatever we want. Now, as I mentioned, uh, during the slides, when I was going over the slides, this mount will not persist. Uh, now to unmount a file system or a partition, all you have to do is the unmount command, and then you do slash dev slash stb1. Sorry, u mount. Now, if we do df minus h, you can see that it's no longer there. Uh, let's go ahead and remount that again and make sure it's there. Um, now, when I was going over the slides, I did mention that when you reboot, the mount that you configure will not persist across a reboot. Um, so if we do a sudo reboot, let's just verify that that's what happens. So the machine has rebooted. Let's check to see if we still have that partition mounted. And as you can see, that SDB1 partition has now been removed. So what we have to do is we have to modify the slash etsy slash fs tab file to tell the machine to mount that specific partition at our desired location uh, upon reboot. So to do that, let's just open up that file. So what I usually do is I usually just follow the um, the syntax of the ones that are already configured there. So let's go to the bottom of this file and let's create a new entry. So the first thing is we have to tell the file which partition are we dealing with. So we can do slash dev slash sdb1, um, but I don't recommend that. Instead, I recommend you do the UUID. So let's go ahead and grab the UUID first. This is the command to get the UUID. So sdb1, this is our UUID for that. And let's open that up now. And what we do is UUID equals, paste that in there. 
All right, then the next line is the mount point. So we want slash home slash Sanjeev slash analysis. Uh, then the file system type, which is ext3. Now the next one, um, if you look at the format of it, is going to be the options. So what this means is that you know the mount command, when it mounts a partition, you can provide it certain options like, do you want it to be read only? Um, and, and there's a few other options. If you want to see what options you have at your disposal, just open up a new window here and make this bigger for you guys. Just do a man and then mount. So this is going to be the man page for the mount command. And we're going to scroll down to the options section. And where is it? Here we go. So we want to come to the file system independent mount options. And I think most of these options are available to you on the uh, slash Etsy slash FS tab file. So you can do async, a time, auto. Um, what other options? I think you can do, let's see, what else? That's a... So default is just going to give us this, these following options. So it's going to be read, write. Um, it's going to give us the SUID, the dev, the exec, auto, um, nowser, and async options. But you can select whichever specific ones you want. Um, so I'm just going to do defaults, and I recommend you create, you keep the last two values of uh, dump and pass to zero. And save those changes, and let's do a reboot. All right, our machine has rebooted. Let's see if the system automatically mounted our partition. And as you can see, it did successfully mount it. So that's all you have to do to ensure that a partition gets mounted on boot. And that pretty much wraps up what I had for you guys. Uh, when it comes to formatting file systems and mounting them, it's pretty straightforward.